ChatGPT just released their biggest update since GPT-4. ChatGPT now has a beta web browsing capability, so that means we have the ability now to scrape for real-time data, upload URLs and have ChatGPT analyze it. And not only that, but they've also activated the plugins feature. So in this video, I'm going to showcase how to use the web browsing capabilities, how to activate it, and then we're going to dive in depth on some plugins. So this is the new ChatGPT dashboard. We have GPT-4 and GPT-3.5, just like usual, except what they've done is they've gotten rid of the legacy version of GPT 3.5. In order to activate the plugins and the web browsing capabilities, what you want to do is go down to these three dots and click them. Next, go to settings, and then this screen will pop up in the middle of your view. Go down to beta features, and now you have the ability to activate plugins and web browsing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate web browsing and plugins. And as you can see, now when we click in the GPT-4 toggle dropdown, we have two new features, browsing and plugins. What we're going to do first is start on the browsing. And this is so cool because ChatGPT now has the ability to scrape real-time data from today on Google search engine. So this first example of the real-time search and web browsing that I want to show you is how ChatGPT can analyze a web page and then it can give you SEO recommendations on how to increase organic reach or whatever your SEO needs are it can provide you with that. So what I'm going to do is by website URL, I'm just going to paste in Nike's website and I've typed out this prompt to say, I want you to help me perform a couple of tasks. First, analyze this web page, and then I dropped Nike's URL. Second, create a checklist of SEO tasks that I should do to improve my organic reach on Google. And actually at the end of this, I'm going to add for this web page. So it knows that it's not just giving me SEO tasks in general, but what it's doing is it's analyzing this web page, taking in all of the SEO, and then it's going to create an SEO checklist of how I can improve my organic reach on Google on this web page. So I'm pretty sure Nike has it figured out, but let's see what ChatGPT can come up with to improve Nike's organic SEO. So I'm going to send this off. And now what you're going to notice is it's popping up this new box for browsing the web, clicking on a link. And what you can do is you can drop this down and you can see what it's doing as it's doing it. So it's clicked on this link. I'm going to open link in new tab. And as you can see, it's Nike's website. And right now it is analyzing and thinking and reading through this website live. And now you can see it's finished browsing, it's done reading the content, and it says, based on the analysis of the Nike homepage, here are some SEO tasks you might consider to improve your organic reach on Google. And now it's going to list out a list of tasks. This is the second part of my task list that I gave ChatGPT. What it's going to do is list out a bunch of SEO suggestions I can do in order to increase my organic reach on that specific web page. And obviously I'm not going to read all this, but what it's doing is it's providing an analysis of the web page and it's providing SEO suggestions. For example, it says add a blog or article section and it says while Nike's primary goal is to sell products, adding a section with blog posts or articles related to sports and fitness could attract some more organic traffic. Does Nike really need any more organic traffic? Probably not. And it's going super in depth on this SEO checklist. So this next one I wanna show you is very cool. My prompt says search for the most recent articles on ChatGPT. Next, create a video outline and script I can use to create a YouTube video, as well as a video title and description and video tags with good high volume keywords. So what I'm doing is instead of searching Google, instead of reading through all of these articles myself, I'm telling ChatGPT to find the most recent articles on ChatGPT, which is kind of ironic, but I'm telling it to find these things. And then after it finds an interesting up-to-date article, what it's going to do is create a video script, a video title, a video description, and everything for me. So as you can see, it searched up on its own recent articles on ChatGPT. And now it's going to click through a bunch of links in order to find the most recent news and generate a good video for me. As you can see, it says click failed here. Sometimes the clicks will fail when trying to go into articles or web pages, but then it will just find another web page or article to go to in order to complete this task list. So what it's done is it's pulled two articles that it found interesting and recent. One was from the conversation and it was talking about health. The second article was about medicine. So it's given me these articles. It says, based on my research, there are two recent articles discussing the use of ChatGPT in the medical field. I don't know why it chose the medical field, but maybe it thinks it's a good video idea. So it gives me these two articles with a bunch of links and sources that I can click into to make sure I'm properly citing these articles in my video. Some nice graphs here on this article. That's very cool. And now it says, let's move on to creating a video outline, script, title, and description. 
So the title of this video, ChatGPT, the AI revolutionizing healthcare. This is mind blowing. I have all my tags, my description, my title, a video outline, and it's going into the script. I can just say keep going because I think it ran out of tokens. So I can just tell it to keep going and it says, sure, here's a suggested script for the video. And now it's going into the script for the video. So yeah, there's not much else I can say other than this is crazy. It's taken this real time data, made a video for me and got everything lined up. So now all I have to do is record the video. Now I'm sure that there are many other use cases that I haven't even touched on using this web browsing capability, but I really think that this is going to help people who do SEO, web designers, people who are content creators and everything in between. And this is still in beta, so I'm excited to see where this goes next. Now let's dive into the ChatGPT plugins. The plugins have been in the talks for about two months now, and I've been very excited to try them out. And we now have the capability to within the beta features of ChatGPT. So just like before, I have the capability to hover over this dropdown and go to plugins. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit plugins. And as you can see right now, it says no plugins enabled. I'm going to click this drop down and head over to the plugin store. And there are pages and pages of different plugins here. You can sort by all plugins, most popular, or you can just go to the new plugins section. I'm going to search through all these plugins and try to find one that I think would be useful to use for my situation. So the first thing I'm going to try is to develop a meal plan using one of these plugins. So Instacart is a pretty popular plugin that I've been seeing circulating. And you can ask ChatGPT about recipes to discover the ingredients you need, and then you can actually get it delivered from your local stores so you can order it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to install the Instacart plugin, make sure it's activated. So now I can ask it about recipes and all the ingredients I need. So I'm assuming that what I can do is I can enable this Instacart plugin, and then I can go down here and ask it to make me a meal plan for this week and give me the stuff I need. So what I did was I activated a new plugin, Wolfram, and this allows for curated knowledge in real-time math with real-time data. So I've activated that plugin. I have my Instacart plugin all activated. And what I've typed out is give me a meal plan for this weekend. I have some steak, chicken, and pasta that I would like to use before it goes bad. Find the calories using the Wolfram plugin and then order the rest of the needed ingredients on Instacart. I'm going to send this off. And as you can see, what it's done is it's used ChatGPT in order to generate me this meal plan. And what it's done is it's been using Wolfram in order to figure out these calories. Some of them haven't worked. As you can see, this first one, uh, Wolfram could not understand. So then it goes into more detail and types it in in a different way. And then it gives me all of the calories, all of the percentage of intake. And it even goes into the finer details here of all of these vitamins and what percentage of the vitamins are being used. Pretty crazy here. That was just in the back end of Wolfram. So now it's going to uh, list it out on the front end using ChatGPT, and it's going to list out the calories. And if I wanna go even more in depth, again, I can just scroll down here and look at all of these stats. And finally, to finish this off, I don't believe how crazy ChatGPT is actually getting. It says, now let's get the rest of your ingredients. You can order the remaining ingredients you need here. And there's a link to go to an Instacart shopping list filled with all of my ingredients that I need. As you can see, the ingredients I need here, it's listed them out. I can now quickly just order them and my mind is officially blown. It just keeps getting more and more crazy by the day. I don't know how we're gonna keep up with this. Um, I don't know if you're ready to keep up with this, but this has just been one of the example of using two of the hundreds of plugins that have been uploaded to ChatGPT. Actually unbelievable. I asked it to generate me a meal plan for the weekend. It generated me a meal plan. It went into the nitty gritty details of all the vitamins that I'm going to get from eating this food, all of the calories I'm consuming, and then it's created a shopping list for the items I don't have. And then I can just order it off Instacart and have them delivered to my house. The capabilities of what you can do from ChatGPT are becoming absolutely insane. And the crazy thing is, is I only showed two of those plugins. There are pages and pages of different plugins that you can try. And they're being added every single day. They have plugins for stock charts, video insights, coding notes, chat with PDF, they even have a Zillow plugin. So what are your thoughts on this chat GPT update? Is it crazier than the update from 3.5 to four? In my opinion, it is because it's taking hundreds of third party apps, putting them together, powered with real time data. So chat GPT is really like an infinite workspace. What else do we need with chat GPT? Now that it has these plugins, you can literally search for anything, 
You can get your SEO done. You can get your copywriting done. You can chat with PDFs. ChatGPT is really taking the cake and it's actually taking away the need for these other third-party applications and softwares that can only do one thing. ChatGPT can really do it all now. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I hope that this video was insightful and I hope that you learned a thing or two about ChatGPT's new update. For more content like this, please hit that subscribe button and drop a like. Hit the bell notification so you never miss an upcoming video and I will see you in the next one.